Hey guys, what is up? It's me, Lori from Tiori, and today we're playing the game called New Sarkara, Legend of the Wing Ones. And I am super sorry if I just butchered the title of this visual novel, but whatever, let's get this started. Long ago, when the world was still young and humans had only just learned how to write, legends of mythical beasts traveled across the countries. Mysteries about the existence of dragons, griffins, unicorns, and many other myths were told in folklores and heritages. Some e of them even possessed, possessed human characteristics such as blah 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 because the text is going way too fast and I'm stumbling on my words. But there was one legend lost and mostly forgotten for there were no more who remained alive today to tell the tale about the winged humans and those whose skin would suffer the skew how they prospered and how they vanished without a trace this is a story about birth death peace war and love how it all began from the gift of a blue crystal, both a blessing and a curse from the goddess. And now, the legend shall be unfolded by a human girl. Chapter 1 Her name is Tamara Gurinwan. I think that's how you say it. Someone, please help. For him, Eek. Gotcha. Now say, Uncle. No. Ah. I don't know what that was, but okay. Princess, I won't stop until you say uncle. No! Yikes, what was that? I can hear you, Tamara. And stop playing Gusty, it's time for her to sleep. Yes, ma'am. Honey. Okay, sweetie, I'll take her to bed. Party pooper. Dad and I were in my room. It was quite dark in here as we hadn't turned on the lights. The sky was adorned with stars. The Night Queen had indeed covered the whole entire sky with her majestic cloak. At least that's what my dad said. He had such a way with words. As moonlight illuminated my room, familiar features greeted me. Man, this does not sound like a 10-year-old or a 9-year-old girl to me. Wooden floor, green walls swept the background of the sky on the ceiling and a big window. I also had some furniture like a cupboard, a small table, and a bookshelf, but that's all. I didn't want my room to be too cramped. I pushed my dad away wanting to escape from the cold floor and to find familiar warmth on my bed. As I climbed onto the bed, Daddy joined me and ruffled my hair. I slapped his hands away playfully, then stretched my arms and legs a bit before reaching under my pillow for my favorite storybook. He ruffles my messy hair again when I approached him with the book, said book in hand. This time, I punched his shoulder lightly. Hey, it's difficult enough to brush his hair in the morning without you messing it up. He faked a hurtful expression and put his hands on the left side of his chest where his heart was, acting like a drama queen. Daddy! He let out another laugh. Sometimes I think he acted more childish than I did, and that was coming from a ten-year-old girl, who doesn't sound like one for sure. All 
right, all right. So anyway, he snatched the book and I leaned into him with expectations clearly written all over my face. Malen Kudeng again? Don't you ever get bored with this story? You read it like almost every day. Girls your age, shooting stories about unicorns, ponies, rainbows, princesses, and princes. Oh, and how about the knight in shining armor riding a white stallion? I know you love it. Dad, that was when I was eight, but that's like about two years ago. So, that's only two years ago. I'm already bored with princesses and princes living happily ever after. Read this one for me, Daddy. So you're tired of Disney already? What's wrong with you? I pushed the book to him, my patience running thin, and this is coming from a ten-year-old. I didn't know why, but the story about a man turning into stone fascinated me. He exaggerated a sigh and finally took the book. Fine, and the magic word is... Please? He let, a huge, he let out a huge grin and kissed my forehead. That's my girl. As he retold the Malin Kudang story for the umpteenth time, I could feel myself gradually getting sleepy. In a short time, my eyes fluttered close, and my body leaned back to his warm and broad chest. I snuggled in closer to my dad, feeling warm and safe. I nearly surrendered to the incoming sleepiness when suddenly, I remembered about my mom's strange behavior earlier. Daddy, why, why does mom get so angry so often now? Well, I think it's just because she's in bad mood. She, she's just on her period today. It's that time of month. I nodded hesitantly, still a little unsure about it. Usually, mommy would join us to play before bed, but lately, I had a feeling that she was drifting apart from me and my dad. Don't worry, she'll be back to normal before you know it. It'll be done in about, like, five days. Everything will be a-okay. He said this while stroking my hair. Yeah, she'll cook delicious food for us in the morning. She'll give me a big hug before I go to school, and... <sighs> I'll tease mom and dad to get a room while they kiss each other good morning. Perfect. Everything will be a-okay. I know it. Okay, I guess this is me when I grow up. Darn it, dreaming about that in a time like this. The gods above must have a knack for making fun of me. So I'm guessing things didn't end well with her parents. The me back then was so naive. It just even hurts to remember about it. I shook my head, erasing the memories of the erasing the remains of the dream. I flicked my wrist to look at my watch. 1 p 1 p.m. Still three more hours to waste. Okay, so what to do? I glanced, not particularly looking for anything. Aside from myself, there were two other people sitting in the bus, minding their own business, and my backpack was sitting securely behind me. Or beside me, I mean. Here I am, on the way to uncle's place. How did this happen again? Oh yeah, he annulled my apartment contract. Ugh, I groaned, remembering one of his undoings. Irritably, I closed my eyes and recalled my recent memories. Man, that's a douchebag man. I was cozy in one bedroom apartment before he suddenly called and demanded me to live with him from now on. A Kuri Nawan should not live in a trash can called a apartment, he said. Or something like that. 
when I declined, I found out the very next day that my one-year contract with my apartment was already annulled by him. Hmm. <laughs> Ugh. That I'm so much better than you, and always the right old man. Who I doubt did even have a blood relationship between me, dares to take my hard-earned home away from me. That sucks so much. Not to mention, I got fired the other day. I wonder why. Man, my uncle has connections. I scoffed. What in the devil's name does he want me? He's does he want with me, and why now? Just when I managed to rearrange my life too. He didn't even give a darn about me when my parents divorced, died. Tell me. I inhaled a deep breath, trying to calm myself. There was no need to complete that sentence. Stop it, Tamara. There's no use in grieving and cursing over it since I'm doing what that man wants now. Didn't have much choice since he stripped me bare of my home and my job. Just calm down and go with the flow. You know how to do it. I glanced outside the window, viewing the unfamiliar scenery, but what I was searching for was the unchanging blue sky. Since I was young, I had always admired the endless blue sky, and for me, it was very charming. Slowly, I could feel my anger slip away, and a thought, or more like a wish, surfaced my head. If only I could turn it into a little bird and fly away. <laughs> and ta-da, here's a white bird in front of you. And it's gone. Yeah, just, just like that. Wait, what? The moment I blinked, the bird disappeared. It must be hallucinating. Such a beautiful bird on the bus. Once again, I checked the metal bus railing along the curtains just to be sure. Nothing. Oh, I guess my mind played a prank on me. You're hallucinating, Tamara. I leaned back again on the seat. Speaking of birds, I remember this little weird dream which has been haunting me recently. I was running in a forest. The details were kind of blurry, but I thought it was autumn since the hues there were hues of yellow, orange, and red all over the place. I didn't know why, but I had this urgent feeling that I needed to find someone. I was running, searching for that someone, and a bird was chirping somewhere in the background. C help. Someone, help. This scene from the beginning, right? It sounded almost as if he was tortured by something unfathomable. The chirping gradually turned into a man's voice. I was scared, scared for him. Can you hear me? Where are you? I never heard such a pitiful voice. I wanted to help him, but all I heard were the sounds of the leaves and more cries. Damn it. I heaved a breath and continued running like a mad woman. Strangely enough, I knew this was a dream, but what was solely embedded in my mind was to find that man and help him in any way I could, but... How am I supposed to help you when I don't even know where to go? His pained cries were now entangled with the voices of people whispering and echoing laughter. Whoever you are, stop hurting him! The voices were only getting louder, swallowing and mocking both my pleading and the man's cries. I stopped in my tracks when I heard another sound. Okay, that was loud. My stomach churned at that sound. Adrenaline pumped in my mind, into my blood, urging me to start running again and find him faster. This is crazy. I don't even know who he is and yet. And yet. If I couldn't find him, then no one could. Please, ma make it stop. It hurts. It hurts. Yikes. I heaved a breath and cried out of fr in frustration. Just kill me. Okay. Her name is Tamara Queen. Scene 1, The Call. Well guys, I think time is up for us. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click that like button and also subscribe. See you soon.